Good afternoon, second graders. Have you ever wondered how we learn about history, the things that have happened to people in the past? Well, there are really two different ways that we can find out about those people that lived before us. And those two ways are different kinds of sources. There are primary sources and there are secondary sources. Now, primary sources are when we get the information direct from the people that lived there themselves. Those kinds of sources would be journals, pictures that somebody took and kept. Um, it might be um, songs that were written by somebody that this actually happened to or that was actually there. Those are called primary sources. Secondary sources are going to be things like when somebody researched about an event or about a person and then wrote a book about them. This doesn't come straight from the person who was a part of that. This is from somebody who has um, looked at other primary sources and then tells the story. Okay, so we're going to look at some of these sources today and um, this is going to lead up to a project that we are going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share a secondary source with you. Okay, now this may be, there we go, this may be a source that you recognize. This is a book that you read on getepic.com earlier this week. It is a book about Laura Ingalls Wilder, okay? Now, the thing about this book is that it was written by a woman named Doraine Bennett. Here is her name right here. Now, Doraine Bennett is not Mrs. Wilder, so she didn't write this book. She studied about her. Maybe she read some journals. Maybe she read some of the Little House books. Maybe she talked to people that knew um, Ms. Wilder um, and she found out information from that and then wrote the book about her. Because it didn't come from Laura Ingalls Wilder herself, this is why it's called a secondary source. A primary source would be if Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote the book. Okay, um, and told the story of her life or wrote a journal and told the story of what happened to her in her life. So this is a secondary source and I'm going to kind of show you some of the things. <laughs> it says Laura was born in a log um, house. All right, she doesn't say I was. All right, so that is a clue that this is not a primary source, that this is a secondary source. Um, she talks again about Laura's mother. Her father, they grew up, not I or we or my mom and my dad. Okay, so this is how we know that this is a secondary source. Okay, all right, so now when we have um, the book of Little House in the Big Woods or Little House on the Prairie, those books are actually written by Laura Ingalls Wilder and they are more of a primary source than a secondary source. And we use these kinds of sources to find out about information in history. Now, the more reliable ones are definitely going to be a primary source. And so if you are ever wanting to find out information about something, you would want to look at journals, you would want to look at deed records and birth certificates and those kind of things that came directly from that time period or from people who were in that time period, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a primary source that I have. This is a journal of a woman during Pioneer Times who with her family went across um, the, uh, there we go. Hold on, let me get rid of that. I don't know why that is there. Okay. There we go. Um, that goes across um, the United States with her family in a covered wagon. She actually goes with a wagon train. Now, 
Mr. Witcher is one of our teachers here. He is a secondary teacher. He teaches Bible. He's also an elder at the Brentwood Oaks Church, and he leads singing a lot um, in our all community chapels. So if you saw him, you would recognize who he is. I had his daughter, Emily, years ago. And when we were studying about pioneers and reading Little House in the Big Woods, one day she brought me this journal and it was written by her relative, Emily Towell. Um, and I believe Emily is named after this great grandmother. And um, there were so many people in the family that wanted this journal that there was a family member who went through the journal and typed it up and then bound it together. Whoops, I have a hard time showing on this. And then bound it together in this little booklet and then distributed it to family members. And the witchers had a couple of copies. And so they have allowed me to keep this journal. Now I want to read a little bit from it so that you can understand how, why this is considered a primary source and why it's so valuable. They left the state of Missouri in uh, 1881, and this was a little bit after um, pioneers had already started to travel. So there were quite a few people that were already settling. There were some towns that were coming up um, at that time already, and so there are going to be times when they actually will stop in a town or at a fort or something like that. Um, and they were able to get some supplies. So these were not the first pioneers, but they're still pioneers because they're traveling by their covered wagon in a wagon train, heading to a new area that is not greatly um, uh, settled. So on May 11th, 1881, I'm gonna read a little bit about what happened from this one called Covered Wagon. On May 11th, 1881, a small company of people gathered in Mercy County, Missouri. This was the beginning of a long and eventful journey westward to the much talked of Oregon Territory. The group numbered 47. There was much excitement that day and every imagination was fired with dreams and visions of new home and fortunes to be made in the fertile west. Tilford Lindsay was made the leader of the wagon train for he had made this journey some time before and was more familiar with the routes and roads to be traveled. The parting from our relatives and dear ones was very sad and heartrending. There were many tears shed as those we last, as those last fond farewells and goodbyes were said. Our hearts were heavy and laden for we little knew when we would see our, their, those dear faces again, I'm sorry. Alexander Tal's brother, Martin Tal, and nephew, Rufus Clampett, met us at Princeton County seat of Mercer County in Missouri and accompanied us on our journey the first day. We drove 15 miles and we camped at Moss Schoolhouse. Okay, and this is because they're still fairly close to where they started and there are still some towns and stuff. There are some towns out in that area. All right, so they're gonna go on through May, and I'm gonna read a couple of days later. And it says, May 15th was Sunday. Therefore, we deemed it wise to rest. Because remember, they would rest on the Sabbath day. But to our way of thinking, the present camp was not a desirable place to spend the day. And for that reason, the horses were hitched up and we drove upon a hill. This was a county of a country of gentle rolling prairies and was delightful to the eye. This was Ringgold and Taylor counties in Iowa. So they've already crossed through an entire state just within a couple of days. Now we know that things were really hard on the trail. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what she says about that right now. She talks about um, in early June about how there are some young children that became sick and one of them became so sick that after the wagon train stopped um, and waited for several days, hoping that the child would get better, but instead he just became worse. 
they took the family to a small town that was nearby and left them there and the wagon train continued without them. So the hope was that the young boy would get better and then they would be able to catch up with them later on. But as they are leaving that town, she says this, there were many mounds at the side of the road giving mute evidence of suffering and sorrow. And those mounds that she's talking about are graves of people that had died as they went along the trail. And then she says, in trials and desolation, the Savior said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. So be it with us, not our will, but thine be done, Father. So you can see that she is relying on her faith there. She also has the words to a song that I'm going to play for you real quickly. This song is called Abide With Me. So let me get it up here so I can share that with you. So that you can hear this song. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, let's listen. Okay, so her writing of the lyrics of the song shows that her faith was very important to her as um, she was on this trail and very important, very important to all of them. She goes on to say, I, Emily Tao, became ill at Willow Island and my son Otho required anxious and vigilant care during the night. So William Evans and Bill Pickett were sent back to Plum Creek for medicine. Plum Creek is a small town that had a doctor. And so they had to go and get the doctor. So that was in June. Now, not everything in the journal is sad because I have an entry here that seems kind of fun. It says, we crossed Rock Creek and stopped beside the creek to eat lunch. Three men took pails and went to the creek for water. They found the stream full of trout that could easily be dipped out if some of the water should be deserted from its, diverted from its course. They promptly set about this, and when they returned to camp, their pails were filled with fish. A mad scramble ensued and everyone snatched pails or vessels of some description and rushed to the creek. In a short time, the very delicious aroma of frying mountain trout assailed the nostrils of a hungry and expectant group, causing their mouths to water. It was a rare, no, there was plenty of fish left over for further meals and it was a rare and unexpected treat that none of us will ever forget. So that is some of the neat things that, one of the neat things that happened. And then I'm going to finish up with what she says on August 11th when they finally arrive. And it says, driving over hill and dale, we reached Dixie Valley, and from there we drove to Middle Valley. 
Middle Value Valley was a very fertile little valley, nestling down among sage-covered hills. The Wiser River wound its way peacefully through the little valley. Great promises were held forth to the weary travelers. Nearly all of our little group decided to stay in Middle Valley, but others took land in Salubria, Indian, and other nearby valleys. There were new hopes, aspirations, and ambitions, and there was much work to be done. Homes must be made. At last, the long journey with its hardships and heartaches was over. And then at the very end, there is a picture that the family put of Emily Tao from 1841 to 1920. And she is the author of this journal, which is why this is considered a primary source. Now, why am I teaching you about primary and secondary sources? Well, I want you to think about what's going on in our world right now. What is happening to us? We are going through a coronavirus pandemic right now. This is something that none of us alive today have ever been through. And it's on a bigger scale worldwide than has ever been known to happen ever. And how are people going to know about what has happened during this? It's going to be primary sources that people are going to write so that 100, 150, 200 years from now, people can read those sources and know what happened, what it was like, what were the people thinking and feeling. When a young person writes a diary out on the, uh, the wagon train headed across country, we see what the children were thinking and feeling, okay? And I think that is very important. So when your parents picked up your bag of materials and supplies from school, one of the things that you found in it was a blank white booklet, okay? The front is white, the pages inside are all blank, and I've been warning you not to write and draw on those things just yet. What we are going to do as a project is you guys, and I'm going to do this myself, are going to create a journal that's going to tell about this coronavirus pandemic. It's going to be something that your family can keep and pass on so that many years from now, your relatives will know what it was like as a child to live through this time. So we're gonna have different, um, different days, you're gonna have a different assignment of something to write about as part of this um, project. And you're gonna be able to make some drawings and things to help you remember. And so um, today, what I want you to think about and what you're gonna write about is you're gonna open your journal and you're gonna turn one page, okay? So after you open the booklet, you're gonna turn one page and then on the two pages that are there, you are going to write about this. You're gonna answer questions and these questions are in Renweb for you, but you're gonna talk about, when did you first hear about the coronavirus? So I want you to think back what month was it when you first heard about what was going on on the other side of the world? Where did you hear that the coronavirus was? What was your thoughts about it? Did you worry at the time that it would come to our country? Okay. And so you're going to be talking about your first thoughts and when you first learned about it. And your drawings can be some things to show where was it happening, okay? You could draw a picture of that country and you could color that, or you could find out what their flag looks like and you can put pictures of it. You could draw maybe a picture on television, um, like the news is talking about it, okay? So that is what I want you to do. I want you to write about when did you first hear about the coronavirus? What time was it? Be sure to include the month, you probably don't know the date, but you will know what year it was, okay? When did you first hear about it? Um, and then you're gonna tell about what had you heard? What did you think? 
what were you thinking? Most of us weren't thinking that this was anything that was ever going to concern us at all. And so those are the kinds of things that you're going to write. So what I would do is maybe write on one side and then on the other side, draw your pictures. Okay. So you're only going to write on that one two page spread. Okay. So open that booklet, turn one page so that you have a page over here and a page over here. I don't want you writing on the inside cover. I want you writing on a page, okay? So write on one side, draw pictures on the other, okay? All right, and um, I hope you have a great afternoon, second graders.